given all our to text 15 minutes. If you run over a few minutes, that's okay, but we might be to try to keep it around 15 minutes. Okay, we'll do it. Uh, first of all, thank you. We, we appreciate the invite up. As always, uh, uh, we like to feel like we're an active part of the community and participant. Uh, Leah's going to go through a little presentation we did to kind of show you our views on the uh, on, on the on the project as well as some of our work history with working with the municipality of Coast City and county government and, and our experience from the funding standpoint. And that kind of stuff. And I'm going, we're going to be back and forth. Uh, she'll be saying some things and then I'll be saying some things too. If you have any questions at any time, you can jump in and you can wait for the end. It doesn't, doesn't matter to us. So, but with that being said, this is Leah Faithlane. She's an associate of ours. She's a mechanical engineer by trade. She's starting graduate school in, in architecture. She's been working with us two years. Uh, works on various projects. Her latest one is very similar to this. She's working up in uh, Osceola, for the city of Osceola, and uh, for the Irwin County uh, group on a, on a park and a master plan. Uh, that will be associated with municipal buildings that are that are very very similar. She's working on a master plan for that right now as we see. But with that, she's got a bunch of spirits in it, and so do we as a firm. Uh, we'll turn it over to her, and I'll join in later and whatever you want to. But here's the mic. Can y'all hear me okay? Well, first of all, just let me say, you know, we're really grateful for y'all to give us the opportunity to come and speak with you today. Um, I'm just kind of gonna go into what we call our hey higher bit of times in life. All in a barrack here. So, there we go. Okay, so we're going to talk about our firm. This is our staff. Obviously, Walter and Keith are the principals, and then we have King Smith, who's a staff architect. He has years and years of experience. He's worked with numerous uh, municipal systems. Travis Ted being a project manager, as well as Alan Wadsworth, um, myself. Then there's Susie Altman and Katie Wilson, who are now our, doing our interiors. Um, and then Luke Parker, who's our office manager. And then some of our overall professional experience. As a firm, we've been together for about 10 years. Between Walter and Keith, they have over 50 years of experience. And over all of our projects, we've done more than $750 million worth of work. So um, that's schools, parks, municipal buildings. You name it, nothing too small or too big. Obviously, we have a personal commitment to Hey Hire. I mean, we're on Main Street and we love Hey Hire and we see such potential in Hey Hire. And we're so excited about this project because we're going to have lots of people who are coming through to see the potential we see. Um, as Hey Hire multiple business owners, you know, this is pretty big impact on our um, companies and our firms here for the long haul. I mean, we're not like any other architecture firm who is doing this project to put it on their resume, to be able to say they did a park right, to build a municipal building. This means so much more to us. It's across the street. It's going to affect our clientele as well as all of our, you know, people we work with on a daily basis clientele. And then, you know, our staff families live here in this community, and their children will be affected by this too. So we take this on a personal level, and we see unrecognized potential in the space. Um, that we're going to talk about here. Some of our municipal experience, I'll let Walter kind of go into this a little more detail, but you can see we've done work with a, a numerous amount of cities and counties. Um, Walter, do you want to Yeah, I'll touch, I'll touch on this. And we're going to work with the city of Austin in, in different capacities, as well as Lyons County. Uh, we've done some work for y'all in the city of Tower with, with our study we did on the Oven Building. We're currently working for the city of Osceola, as well as Irwin County. We've done work in Ashburn and Kern County, Chris County, Queens County. We've done a bunch of work uh, for the city of Tiffin and, and for their Buffalo Authority and for the county, uh, Tiffin, Tiffin County up there as well, the city of Fitzgerald and the city of Lakeland. What that means is we, we know how to, how to work around and work with the government and the different utility departments and all the things that go with that. We can do that very seamlessly. Uh, that was the part of the time we were working on the city of Valdosta when Mayor Register was up there that she needed that we were willing to put on the car lot. So we were trying to rush that thing through. But we put that there as an image. And by doing that, we'll go to the next slide. Um, you know, of course, we're very familiar with the different funding sources that where your money comes from to do these things. And the paperwork that it takes to do it and uh, the efforts that it takes you to go out there and get these types of money from your seat, the BG grants, housing urban development, USDA, Department of Community Affairs, special uh, your, your boss tax, as well as any kind of bond issue. We've done we've done with all those types of uh, financial instruments to do city municipal work. 
county work. Um, we've got some railroad experience too. Um, th those folks, they can be pretty tough to deal with. Sometimes hard to get a hold of, real hard to get a letter from. Um, but we have worked with them. I know we've got that railroad right next there, and it's going to be it's going to be some business done, you know, between y'all and them. We've got experience working with them. We'll do anything we can to help you facilitate that business with them, whether it's like restaurants, whatever we need to do to, to, to make that as seamless as, as we can. Because there will be some conversation with, with those folks in this project. Um, really? um, so basically that was, you know, a history, a really brief history of our firm because it, we, you know, you've seen it, proposal we're next door, but now we're kind of talking about the exciting part what we kind of envision to give them that plot of land. And so just some things that we think affect k Hire specifically more than if we were to do this, you know, anywhere in the U.S., this is what we think k Hire needs. And the first is we want it to look and feel public. So we want people to be driving on the street and immediately feel like welcome to that, that space, park their car, get out and walk, even if they're not residents of Hayhira, they feel like they can be part of the community immediately. And so the way to do that is to establish clear boundary lines. So that means that the street stops, the sidewalk begins, and then right there, that's where the park is. And what that does is it says to people, oh, this is for the community, this space is set aside for us. And with that, having the surrounding sidewalks, the most important part about a park that leads to a municipal building is that if you don't have sidewalk access to any piece of the facility, then it won't be used. It'll, people just won't access it. They don't see it as an invitation to come up. So we make sure that we have everything accessible, inviting to the community, and then most importantly, universal design. And what that means is that of any age, whether it's a five-year-old child or an 85-year-old you know, retiree in the community, they all feel like there's something for them there. So that's what we keep in mind. The second thing, and we find this important for us, but as well as all of our you know, people that work around us, is a seamless transition with Main Street. And so what I'm trying to say there is we want people to come for the park, but then leave for the shop and for, you know, to to go to the bank in town, to go grab lunch, come back to the park. And so we want the park to catch them and bring them in and then them to spend their money in Hayhira to feel, you know, part of the community. This, uh, I'm gonna touch in on that too, you know, with all the studies and the research and the things, you know, about that is, when you do something like that, it raises the value of all of our businesses and all our property, anywhere from 11 to 15 percent. Um, so, I mean, it's a big deal to us. Um, of how this thing works, how you approach it, how you leave it, making sure we can get people from this side of the street, which is a really busy street, over to the other side of the street, you know, with some type of crosswalk or some way that control traffic. That's going to be, a, you know, a pretty good transition point. We've got a lot of shops and businesses on the other side, and we want folks that are doing things there to be able to get to the other side on a regular day, not like a festival day, but like on a regular uh, weekday or business day. And so, so we will pay very close attention to that. You know, overall, the park will be dynamic. I mean, it is, um, it, I'm, I'm not criticizing, but this, this is a, uh, this this is a more of a means to get to somewhere else. It's not, it, it's, it's not an enhancement of a park. It's more of a municipal setup where you've got a sidewalk and a thing. If you've got a bandstand, I mean, you need a place to have people to gather. I mean, and it's a large open area, or you're doing film, or you're doing festivals and things like that. So, so you'll 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 need you I mean you'll need open you know open space around there to, to do something like that. It wouldn't be conducive to sit like that and have a fountain that walks where your people want to go and how they're going to see it and how they're going to view it because it's like a theater. You got sight lines and things like that that you're working on, and and the pieces that y'all are going to put in there that makes this park a house park are the things that you got over there now, like your caboose. They could be modified into something else or a strategic element. The bandstand, another, you know, like the film thing, and how you do those types. Those are the things that's going to make it very special to Hay High. You've got other folks in town that have approached us, and I'm skipping down here to private investors, that would like to make a, a, a monetary contribution so they could, you know, maybe put a piece in the park of, of any kind that they can honor, you know, one of their family members or their mother and daddy that, that were citizens here. Uh, we've been approached, we've been approached by that. Uh, so, so there's a, there's, there's a lot to it, and there's, there's a lot of parts, and there's a lot of pieces, and those historic elements that make this thing take higher are very, very essential on how those are placed, and how we can work people around it, and how we can make those spaces work. 
No, we're not along with it's going to be a municipal site. When you do the municipal buildings, you don't have to give them a reason to come. They've already got a reason to get to the municipal building. They're, they're up there doing business at City Hall, and they're, they're doing that kind of stuff. But the parks are, the parks are a little different. You have to entice people. You have to make them want to come to your park. And just playing off of what Walter said about how a park you know, increases the value of their area around, the New York Times has done a study, and if a store sells the same material in a store next to a park, and then in a store that's not next to a park, same exact product. They say that the people who come to that store by the park say that the product is 30% of higher quality. It's the same product. But the only way that's happening is because the park is enticing them to come and they feel that the community takes pride in their park, so they take pride in what they sell, so they're not going to sell a lower quality product. So what Walter and I try to do is design a park that makes the community feel really involved. And the way to do that, we think is through historical elements. Um, you know, we know AI is a really active historical society, and this would be a great time for them to get involved in this. Um, you know, I'm from Oxford, Mississippi, is where I went to school. And that's like the history, the statues are all around, the benches have statues of people that were really meaningful. And that's a great opportunity, not only for historical elements, but also for private donations. If someone feels that their family member contributed to Hayara, um, we'll get to a picture of it in a second of what that could look like. But there's just limitless opportunities for that. It could be where from a city bench, a city park bench. To a hundred thousand dollar feature. Name on the building, even. So it, 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 it could range in there. So that's a door to keep open. Um, this is just a quote that you know I think speaks to how we should design this park. Cities are characterized by a sense of place, beauty, and the natural environment. These are the characteristics that attract the creativity and brain power that undergird the new economy. Basically, this is saying that when you establish a park. You are drawing the, thing, the movers and shakers to move to your community. People who take pride, they want to you know, build businesses, they want to establish their families here, and that's what we're going to try to bring to the table. Some potential design features that do that, that you might not be able to see in this drawing over here that we think are really important. The first is curved fluid walkways. Um, a straight line walkway, what it says to somebody mentally, you won't even know you're thinking it, is, I'm going to get from point A to point B as fast as possible, and I'm not going to be distracted along the way. A curved fluid walkway, however, encourages, ex encourages exploration. So you want the walkway to move throughout the space. You can see down here in the corner how these walkways are curved, they're moving, and it encourages all the people to walk through the park. The large green spaces, that can help you with the curved walkway, because now your band family, like Wal Walter was saying, allows people to sit, put a blanket down, sit with their children, listen to music. Um, you know, the Boy Scouts can have their bath ceremony out there and their parents can sit in the yard with the rest of their children. You know, these are just some options we want to discuss with you later on if we were lucky enough to have this project of things that could be used. One of them is an interactive fountain. Obviously, if it's super hot in South Georgia, this is a great way to draw families out. And then with that, you know, bocce ball courts, water fountains, outdoor movie areas. Like Walter's saying, I'm doing a facility like this in Irwin County and the city for the city of Silla. They have a pretty small community drive where they work together on things. And they put an outdoor movie area out this year and sold 750 tickets, which is outstanding for a community like that. And so we're seeing parents are wanting to bring their children out and do family bonding activities, and we want to provide a space for that. Another thing is chess and checkers tables. Um, we want all ages to feel like this is a place for them to come. And then shaded areas, back to what Walter and I were saying, statues and historical monuments. You can see this fish down there. That's William Faulkner. You know, in Oxford, that's a huge thing for people to come and sit and take their picture with William Faulkner. They just go to the park for that. And I'm sure there's someone important in Hayara. And you can see the bandstand, all these people sitting in the front. We're talking about that green area, bocce ball, the chess and checkers. So these, these are hardscapes that are easy to maintain, too. You don't have to kill yourself with the labor of beating, beating your personnel up to, to do those types of things. Weather resistant. These are things that you know last for forever, um, but then they draw the people into the park area. From all different age groups. Right. And then, you know, just kind of in summation of what we've been talking about, most importantly, it's local business centers in Tejara. We're really committed. And we couldn't take that any more seriously. Um, what goes across that street affects us as directly as possible. And 
We just think it'd be great for it to have a fluid and inviting architectural landscape design. Get people out there, get people walking around Main Street. And we want it to be popular when it's not the Honeybee Festival. I mean, that's great that there's people here all the time, and that's going to be such a great space to utilize during that festival, but this should be an area that can be utilized all year long, um, and we just think it has such true potential. I don't know if Walton, do you want to? Oh, yeah, yeah, look at that, that, that's exactly right. Like, you got Spring Fest coming up there, they have the activities there tomorrow, uh, but, you know, on every day on Wednesday, you know, just. You know, it'd be nice people could go by and buy their lunch up there, walk out to the park, and do the things, have some, some elements of the park that would attract the different people that are that the community would have an interest in doing and, and, and building those in this hardscape and then allowing the history to kind of intertwine around it. Uh, we'll lead back up to your municipal your municipal building. We've uh, you know we've produced really nice projects, uh, award winning projects, uh, got a big list of those. We do it on tight buying lines and high budgets just because it's not about money that many can't be great. Um, and, and we see hey, hours true potential. I mean, we, we really do. And, and what that thing can do for the community, it can extend Main Street, it can, it can take Main, Main Street and bend it back the other way. Uh, but, so there's a, there's a whole lot of things that, that that can do, especially on how you master plan that, where you put these pieces and, and how they relate to each other. Uh, we've got art design uh, uh, strengths. We, you know, I was the architect director and the designer for, uh, for Barlow Park, which was over on Whitman Street. Different type of park, um, had different activities in it. It was um, more set up for amphitheater, basketball. We had a work park, but we had some picnic areas that went up the hill and things like that. Uh, and it's been a very successful park that they, they wear out. You know, they, they, it's, it's a very highly used park. And that, that's what we want this to be. Whatever it becomes, we want it to be a hub of where people would like to go. Because it is right in the center of the area, which is perfect perfect location for it. Yeah, and what this will do, just thinking about the the center of Kayhire, right now, I know that four-way stop seems to be the heartbeat of Kayhire, but you're going to be pulling that down toward the center of where the shops actually are. So people are going to stop prior to getting out of Kayhire, getting to the connection points to move to Valdosta, and that's going to keep them here. And potentially keep them coming back. Um, and also, I just, you know, I think it speaks for itself that it's going to come across as a well-lit, extremely safe area for people to go. And I think, I mean, we all know that that's what everyone's looking for nowadays, to be able to go somewhere at, at night with your kids, you know, sit down after dusk, after dinner, and have an ice cream. And I just think this is going to be a great place for that. Um, if you have any questions, we'd love to take a moment. And we appreciate the call up to, yeah. to talk to you. Kind of what we've done about it. Any council have any questions for Paul Manager? I appreciate y'all coming. Thank you. We appreciate it. We'll see y'all all tomorrow. <laughs>